Shouldn't be able to make it. So it looks like Anna just joined us. I haven't heard from Laura. Laura's oh, here. Laura's, Laura's there she is. Camp. I see her. Okay. Um, so why don't we get rolling? We'll see how quickly we can get through this. So welcome everyone. Today is February 24th, 2021. This is the Amherst Conservation Commission meeting. Um, so we're going to start off with a item from me tonight. I got a message from the Town Services and Outreach Committee. They would like a letter from all of the town commissions in regards to a new project that is happening down in South Amherst, um, particularly what they call the Pomeroy Village. I never heard it called that before. Yeah, um, it's been, and, yeah that's where it is. <laughs> yep. And so they're talking about putting either upgrading that intersection or putting in a roundabout. Um, if you read through their materials, they talk a lot about Hickory Ridge. So it is kind of interesting there. Um, so I don't know if Stephanie or Dave, if you have specific background, I could talk a little bit. No, sure. You, <laughs> yeah, it's a project. To Sorry, I'm just wondering if you want me to share any of the materials. Uh, Are you talking, Dave? It depends how much time the commission has tonight. I mean, I, I think I can, you know, this is a project that I've been working on with, with my staff in the planning department for a number of months. So um, there's been many plans through the years to improve the intersection at Pomeroy Village Center, which is the intersection of 116 uh, West Street and, and uh, Pomeroy Lane. Uh, Mission Cantina is right there, the four corners with the gas station mission and uh, various commercial buildings. And uh, through the years, we've been unsuccessful at getting any grant money to help us uh, to improve that intersection. But lo and behold, we got a $1.5 million grant through what's called the Mass Works, uh, Mass Works Program. So <clears throat> this is about a three-year project, and we'll kick off um, public outreach and input uh, session and I think the TSO committee is beginning that. Um, we're going to be talking about this with the TSO tomorrow night. I believe that meeting is at five. Um, but again, this is all preliminary. It's all very early. We just got awarded the grant, um, and I think they're reaching, as Brett said, as you said, Brett, they're they're reaching out to committees and boards saying, um, "We'd love to love to get some input from you all." Um, it has not been decided whether this would be a roundabout or a signalized and enhanced signalized intersection. Uh, ultimately, that'll be up to the council to decide because it's in the public right away. It will include, you know, the, the, the goals of the project are uh, obviously safer vehicular uh, movement, uh, pedestrian uh, movement, uh, bicycle uh, uh, movement through and, and, and among the businesses and the residential units there. We mentioned Hickory in large part um, because there is a connection there. We're trying to make a connection through Hickory for people to get to the village center. Uh, we also thought it would help our, our uh, application and I, we think it did uh, to reference the acquisition of Hickory Ridge. But primarily this is an intersection uh, project. That's all that this is gonna pay for. It'll pay for a roundabout or signals or you know an increased sidewalk uh, improvements there, those kinds of things but it will not get a sidewalk to Hickory Ridge. Um, that is not in the budget. Um, so, you know, there are wetlands uh, associated and nearby. There's a couple of stream crossings there as well. And those may, may be in the project area. They may be, the, the, the one stream crossing is the Plum Brook crosses under West Street, north of the village center. And we may get that far with the improvements. I kind of doubt the money will go that far, but it's certainly worth the commission thinking about. And um, Steph, I don't know if you have an image or two uh, there. Um, I have the um, presentation that was provided. Sure. I can, it's let a, me just, I can just shuffle through it. Yeah, let me see there, if I can. there should be a, a nifty image or two in that PowerPoint. Yeah, there's some good see if I can find pictures something. in there, some good plans. Which is also so sorry, available Mike. on the OneDrive. Did all the commissions see see the the PowerPoint and get any questions? Everybody has it um, had access to it in the mm -hmm. OneDrive folder. Sorry, I'm trying to find the one that has images. So there will be a test to see how much <laughs> you retained. 
Yeah, so you already answered the one big question I had, Dave, which was just in reference to Hickory Ridge um, to see if there was going to be, you know, more access to it, but apparently not. And so, yeah, that intersection is a little funky, no doubt. So, but I mean, apart from, you know, since it's not a tax or it's not connecting to Hickory Ridge directly, I don't see much in terms of our role from the conservation perspective. If it hits wetlands, we'll see it. But besides that, I don't really know if we have much input from our side. I don't know if other folks have different feelings or. No. I just add, if it's a roundabout, that you get a sculpture of a beaver <laughs> in the middle of that roundabout for all the folks on Pomeroy Lane. I second that. Eating a nice Mission Cantina taco, please, but yes. Did you people see the article about the Native Americans from the West Coast importing beavers from various places to repopulate their native lands? I know where they can get some. <laughs> I think there's certainly going to be fewer in that area than there were in 2019 and 20. Um, just, just for my own cur curiosity, Dave, yeah. and this is not a conservation committee question necessarily, but will money have to come from the town for this project as well as or strictly from the state? It's in large part, I'm 90 some odd percent uh, funded by the state, 1.5 million. We'll certainly have to put in some engineering time, some planning staff time, the whole public outreach uh, uh, will come through the planning department. So um, there'll, there'll be a, a fair bit of that, but by and large, it is all state funding. Yeah, it looked like about 200K in matching, Laura. That's not bad, okay. So no cash from the town, at least according to what I looked at. Do you wanna keep going, Steph? I think there's- Sure. We can kind of stop that. You know, it's, I'd keep going next. That's <clears throat> just, yeah. I thought you were looking for images. Yeah, I was looking for kind of the map showing just where people live. There's the village center for context. And, you know, there are a lot of people who live very close to that village center. So it's been a troubling spot for us for a number of years from a pedestrian and a bicycle uh, standpoint. Um, there, you can mm -hmm. see just within walking distance of that village center, there are literally thousands of people, thousands of residents and families. And it's a very challenging intersection because there are no crosswalks and there are no uh, crossing signals. So this will be a huge upgrade uh, regardless of which way we go. Yeah, I try to cross that when I'm running sometimes and it's sketchy. Yeah, yeah and that's that's kind of interesting showing the, you know, kind of the, the, the remaining open space. And then of course, uh, to the far left on, on, on the computer, at least my computer screen is um, Hickory Ridge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Brett, if, you know, I think it, it would be worthwhile if a, if, a, if a brief, you know, memo came from you, you know, just reiterating the commission's commitment to safeguarding uh, resource areas, wetlands, uh, streams, et cetera. And, um, you know, some reference to Hickory, I think, would be helpful. Um, you know, we, we certainly are going to be thinking about the connectivity through Hickory to the Village Center. But again, this project won't pay for any of that. Yep. Yep, happy to put that together. And Dave, would it be useful for us to vote on this as well? Or is a simply a letter from me sufficient? I, I would look to the commission members if I don't think we, we necessarily need to take a vote. Rather, if, if there's a sense of the meeting that they empower you to write a, 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 a brief memo to the TSO, that would be fine, I think. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to be endorsing this per se, but yeah, as you're saying. Exactly, because there will be a notice of intent uh, coming, regardless. Yeah, and so my intent um, just was just kind of bring this in front of the commission, see if anybody had any ideas, uh, as Dave is suggesting, um, see if People support me submitting a letter and we can call it a day at that. 
Yeah, I support you. Sounds good with me. All in. Okay, great. Um, so I'll get that together. There's some timelines. I got to check on what those are. I'll make sure to hit those. And yep. And so Laura, that's the, the dollar figure there. So, okay, excellent. Um, so I think we're good on this one, unless anybody has any questions or comments. Can I ask Dave a sideline? Have we, do we own Hickory Ridge yet? We do not. We do not. I was just out there this afternoon. Who's 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 taking care of who's I've had my son has been out here and some friends have been out here in terms of cross country skiing. Who's driving all over the place? Uh, it's a good question. It's a good question, Larry. I think, you know, with lack of, of on site, you know, over management, I think people are taking some liberties there with snowmobiles and four wheel four wheelers, ATVs. Yes. My son talked about the four wheelers. He didn't, he was, he was very, yeah. my son is on the conservation commission in, in Foxborough. So he was talking mm -hmm. to me about the fact that what's going on out there. Yeah. Um, not ours yet. It's not ours yet. So it's, it's, it's a tough one for me to watch <laughs> from afar. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, there is a decent amount of snow cover. So I'm kind of reassured that, yeah you know, the impacts from snowmobiles and, and ATVs over a, a winter, a decent winter snow is pretty minimal, but that will become an issue if, you know, when, when the snow melts later in March. What's going to happen when we own it? Are we going to stop that? Absolutely. Okay. No, okay. no motorized vehicles. Okay. Except for conservation or town related vehicles for maintenance. And of course the solar vehicles will have access, but that's, that's minimal throughout the year once the solar is built. Okay, so I'm going to try and move us along. So is there anything else that we want on this one or any other questions? Okay, so we're good um, on this one. Why don't we move over to the minutes? So there are two sets of minutes that were distributed in our packets today. Um, they are fairly concise, which is fantastic. So thank you, Stephanie. Right. Um, if people have not had a chance to look at them, now it'd be, you know, it shouldn't take too long. And once people have looked at them, if we can get a motion starting with the 127 notes um, to approve, then we can move on to 210. So I make a motion to approve the 127 notes. I wasn't at the 210 meeting. Second. Okay, so, um, so Laura, you said you were not at this meeting? No, I, I was at this meeting, 127. I was not at the 210 meeting. Okay, gotcha. So um, I think anybody can make the motion, but I think to vote in favor or against, you just have to be there. Oh, so, got it. Okay. Um, I probably could have looked at the top and found out who was, but thank you. Sorry. Okay, so uh, why don't we do a voice vote on this? So Larry? Aye. Laura? Aye. Leroy? Aye. Fletcher? Uh, I think I abstain. I wasn't on that one. Okay. Uh, is abstain the right word, or did I say, uh, yeah, abstain? That sounds okay. good. Aye. And then I from me as well. Okay, so we are good on those notes. So thank you for that, Stephanie. So why don't we move on to the notes from 210? There are a couple of typographical area errors in the 210 one, but they're just minor spelling errors about three quarters of the way down. That's not very helpful. Right. Much I looked at it earlier. Sorry, Stephanie. No worries. Boilerplate was one word that was misspelled. Remember that. Stuff that gets stuck in my head. No worries. Um, sorry, let me just get these up there. It was a slight missed opportunity to use the word B search, but I'm letting it go. <laughs> Thank you for, for these, Stephanie. It was helpful because I wasn't there. Sure. Sorry, I'm just having a little technical challenge here right now. Just bear with me one second. I've lost my cursor. <laughs> I'm trying to go between two monitors. Okay, do folks need to see it or um, any folks want you can- You have them. Yep, so Sorry. If somebody wants to make a motion that, that works as well. I'm gonna move to approve the meetings of the 210 meeting. And the minutes of the C seven. I second. 
Thank you, Larry. I think I have to abstain. I think I missed that meeting. Okay, Leroy. Aye. Laura. Abstain. Fletcher. Same. Anna. Uh, I'm abstaining, but Larry, it is uh, it says on the minutes that you were present, just as an FYI. I vote aye. <laughs> <laughs> and I vote aye as well. So I'm not quite sure we have quorum on that one, but I think we're good anyways. So, okay, excellent. Uh, before, before you move on, can I just make yeah. a quick comment on um, minutes? And I really appreciate Stephanie uh, in so many ways, but for getting those uh, those minutes done as well. And before Aaron went on maternity leave, we did have a little chat about um, minutes because I think with with everything flying at Aaron this fall and with COVID uh, fall winter, um, we are a little bit behind on minutes. So I think that's going to be kind of a high priority when she gets back. Um, so we we do want to get caught up on minutes. It's 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 a legal requirement, and people do ask to look at them. And uh, so. So if you if you notice on the website we are behind, but it, it's a high priority when when Aaron gets back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing that was mentioned a while ago, Dave, is there is a feature within Zoom to uh, do automatic transcriptions, and so mm -hmm. I do it for most of my classes and other things, and so it works super quick. I mean, it's every word that does they don't get everything, but they're pretty good. So. Yeah, that step. Have you had any experience doing um, um, related meetings with that feature? I've seen it. Um, no, I've seen it, though, but I, I'm smiling because the last time that I checked uh, the recording from this meeting, it called you the Amorous Commission. <laughs> That's <cute. laughs> which I thought was, it was, it was right around Valentine's Day. So, you know, it worked. <laughs> okay. It could be worse. But isn't this all recorded anyway? So, do we have to, or does Aaron have to, even though? I think we have to have written minutes. Okay. Yeah. So the the, right. the audio and video will live on, but I think we're we're still required to have written minutes. Yeah, I think um, the recordings are definitely helpful, but and it I mean it actually helped me be able to go back and 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 do the minutes. So it is good that we have them, but yeah, I don't think they um, are a substitute for having minutes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Okay. So just checking the time. Um, so Dave, do you want to go through your report now? Do you have anything you'd like to add today? I have a few things, Brett, but I wonder if maybe Steph, you know, do you, do you, you know, your things are typically more pressing. I mean, mine are just kind of updates on projects, but I, I will go or fill in wherever the agenda um, has space. Yeah, I was wondering if we want to just save both of them till the end, till later after the hearing. Yeah, we have about 10 minutes before we can start the hearing. Okay. Sure. Um, I definitely have a few things that I can cover I then. Yeah. Um, in, your, in your packets, just a very quick monitoring reports from Aspen Heights. Those are weekly reports. Those came in. Um, but I wanted to give you an update on a few things regarding um, a bundled order of conditions that you had issued for some stormwater work at UMass. Uh, Mickey Marcus submitted uh, proposals for some of the work that would happen this summer. It's early yet and I know Aaron will be back. I just wanted to get it on your radar that that's coming, but um, it's more just a courtesy of the notification. And then I think if Aaron might want to take a look at the projects and see what he's doing, and then, um, you know, she may want to be on site for some of the work or just check in with him about some of the work and follow up. So I gave you that information. Um, just a recorded order of conditions from Eversource for work at 325 Sunderland Road was included in your packet. Um, and then, um, let's see. I guess there's another issue that came up regarding um, a rather large project that Eversource proposed where the commission was going to get some financial compensation for some of the impacts. Um, I just got a, had a long call with David Fallis today um, uh, just about the order of conditions when it was issued referenced only part of the impacts to the um, to the resource areas. And I know Aaron came back or they came back and Aaron had issued a letter that basically outlined um, 
the greater impacts, which then had the financial um, remuneration for that for those impacts identified. So David's concern was that there are six towns that are impacted by this specific project. And almost none of the order of conditions had the total area of impact, resource area impact identified. So I had a call with GZA after the talk with David Fowlis and they, um, they understood what the concerns were. Um, they did feel like they had presented all the information to you, which was confirmed by Aaron's letter. And I could, you know, verify that that was the case. However, it doesn't, um, it still necessitates the need to have that documented in the actual permit because it's the permit that gets attached to the deed. So in terms of having a, a real record of the impacts, they really need to have something that's part of the permit. So what, um, what they're going to do is to submit an amended, a request for an amended order of conditions. Um, I had recommended that they do that because they also told me that they identified a small wetland area that was never identified in the original survey and plans. So um, instead of just kind of a Scribner's correction on an order, it was better that they request the amended order because then we can reference the revised plan as part of that order. And then in that we can add the correct calculations for resource area impact. So it sort of brings everything up to a cleaner, neater package that I think DEP will be much happier with. Um, David was not necessarily uh, pushing back on the amount of resource area alterations so much as process. So I think it was, we had a lot of long conversations. It seemed like it might've been something way more complicated, but we were able to, um, to work it out. And so that will come before you probably on March 24th. You'll come in with the amended uh, request for an amended order. And just to be clear, this is the one that's running through Sweet Alice? Um, so off of Bay Road? It's the one, uh, it's the one by, um, I want to say it was said Montague Road and um, it's a pretty long, it's oh, a pretty okay. long corridor. It's a really long corridor. Yeah, it's the one that, that main line that goes all the way through, through town. Yes, yeah. it goes all the way through town, pretty much. Yeah. So um, anyway, so they'll be coming, they'll be coming back before you with that. And I did let David know that that's what the recommendation was and uh, it does open it, you know, because it's a, a request for an amended order, it does give DEP an opportunity to take a look again as well, in case they have any other outstanding concerns. Yep. So um, that's the biggest. I have another um, enforcement updates, but I can save that for later. We still have five minutes. Dave, do you have five minutes worth of anything? <laughs> Oh, Dave, you're a microphone. I always have five minutes worth of something if you need some quick updates. Sure, why don't you go for it, Dave? You want to go, Brett? Um, so yeah, let me rattle through a few things here. Um, so I've reported to you about our search for an assistant land manager, and um, Stephanie is on that search committee. Again, thanks to Steph for, for, for that work. Um, and we're down to, to a couple of finalists. So I think by the weekend, we should have our candidate, which is really exciting. Um, we've got, um, we had close to 50 applicants, which is wonderful, not surprising given the economy. Um, but we have some terrific, uh, you know, candidates and, um, I think we will find our, our assistant land manager coming out of that. So, you know, I could see a couple of week transition for that, that successful, uh, applicant. And then, um, you know, we'll have the remainder of the month, month of March and April to, uh, get that person acclimated. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, there may, with some of the candidates, there may be less acclimation than others. So we'll have to see who is the, the finalist and who accepts the job. Um, I've been corresponding pretty regularly with the Fort River Watershed Group. I think some of you may be on their email list. Um, this is the fledgling group that is quite organized around uh, advocacy for the Fort River and its tributaries. Um, they are gearing up to do more water quality work um, on the Fort River and its tributaries this spring. Um, at their latest meeting, which was yesterday, 
they talked about doing, um, uh, they're very interested in doing some sort of interpretive trail. Uh, sounds familiar, lots of people wanting to do uh, interpretive trails right now. So they talked about doing an interpretive trail along the Dickinson uh, corridor, the Dickinson Trail, which begins at um, Groff Park and then goes mm -hmm. easterly to, um, to down uh, the other end of Mill, Mill Lane. Um, and I said, you know, by all means, if you have a proposal, bring it forth. Now, I do recall that the commission voted to approve, uh, and I, I can't really, I'm a little cloudy on uh, fuzzy on, on what it was, but I think it was a, a poetry walk of some sort down there. I don't think the two are necessarily mutually exclusive. I think the Fort River group would like to focus on, on geology, on water quality, things of that sort, but this is a very well organized group and, and I think it'd be interesting to, um, you know, to engage with them. Yeah, I think it was more just a single box or something like that, Dave, if yeah. I remember correctly. Um, sticking with the Fort River theme, uh, Stephanie and I are continuing to work, of course, with Beth Wilson from DPW on the Fearing Brook project. Um, and that will be coming to you in the form of an NOI in the next, I would say, month. Is that about right, Steph? Um, in relation to that, Stephanie has also been working with um, some folks um, around food security and uh, that group has secured money and um, other other materials to kind of support our, our community gardens down there. So as we speak, there are a dozen or more raised beds being put together this winter at the old Hitchcock Center building. And um, come spring, we will be pulling those out. Now, the challenge uh, with these multi-pronged projects is how do we coordinate um, how do we yeah, consider and possibly coordinate use of community gardens when we're gonna have a major construction project happening on that um, conservation area later this summer? So mm -hmm. access and um, easement rights and safety um, come into play. So Steph and I will have a, an update for you in a couple of weeks on that. Um, we're, we're gonna be meeting with some of the adjacent landowners and talking about some of these access issues. But um, suffice it to say that we're going to get those gardens going at the Fort River Farm. It may be kind of a fall planting if people want to put in gardens this fall, you know, garlic and other other perennial uh, vegetables for for actually harvesting in spring of uh, 22. So, so um, that's probably about five minutes if you want to get going, Brett. Yeah, that was fantastic timing. And yeah, good to hear about the Fort River, Dave. So thank you. Okay, so yep, I do have 7.30 by my watch. So why don't we get going with our 7.30 uh, agenda item. So this is a notice of intent. This hearing is being held as required by the provisions of chapter 131, section 40, the general laws of the Commonwealth and act relative to the protection of wetlands as most recently amended in the town of Amherst wetlands bylaw. This is on behalf of the town of Amherst Department of Public Works for construction of 9,500 linear foot extension of drinking water main, associated valve, service line, hydrants, et cetera, under East Leverett Road, Cushman Road, and T. Waddle Road, Leverett, with directional drilling under Cushman. And so I assume, Beth, you'll be presenting. So I'm not sure that you really need to introduce yourself, but if you could introduce yourself, Beth, and then introduce the project. Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Beth Wilson, <laughs> I'm an environmental scientist with DPW. And yeah, I'm here to present the uh, water main extension project under East Leverett Road. Um, and then it goes into Leverett under Cushman Road and T. Waddle Road there too. Um, I think I should just try and share the plans and we can, you know, I can just talk and describe the project while we look at the plan set. Um, so I'm gonna try and share that. <coughs> And I'm not sure how to do that. Oh, 
almost we can see um yep there we go yeah there we go ah there we go <laughs> got it um all right so this project is um as i said it's a water main extension project um it's a total of 9500 linear feet it starts approximately here's the intersection of leverett road and east leverett road so it's just the limit of work is just past that intersection. Um, and as you can see throughout the project, there's areas that have BVW. Here's a little area of BVW right here. Um, there's areas of BVW both north and south of East Leverett Road. And then there's also a riverfront for the Cushman Brook. Um, so, and as we go through the pages, I can kind of point out where the BBW areas are. Um, the project is, it's trenching mostly. So there's a, it's a 12 inch main that's gonna get put in under East Leverett Road. And so the trenching, um, we're estimating the trenching to be about six feet wide for a six foot trench box, um, seven feet deep. Um, it'll all be within the right of way. It'll all be within the road. The pavement is only going to get cut for the trench. Um, and the trench will be backfilled um, with gravel around the pipe itself. And then the excavated soil that's been excavated for the trench will be put back in. Um, and the pavement will get patched. And they are planning to put all soil back in the day of. So they'll just move along the line. And what they excavate in a day, they'll Put back in so they won't be storing any soil really on the um, on the roadway um, and as we go through the sheets you'll see wherever there is bvw there's um, silt socks for erosion control that's what these little little squares are um, and in, ad in addition to the trenching for the main line there's trenching for service lines this is a service line right here for this house the service line trenching will be a little more narrow, three feet or so, um, and will just go off of the paved road if all the service lines and the hydrants are still within the right of way. Um, so why don't we go to the next sheet? So this, you can see, this is the beginning of the, the main along here. We've got erosion control. Oh, and the other resource area is, um, BLSF. Um, this line right here is the uh, 100 year elevation line based on what AECOM has done for Amherst. So that's base, base level, base, base flood elevation. Um, and so that that's mostly to the south of East Leverett Road, but there are a couple areas I can show you where it comes on to East Leverett Road and some of our work will just barely get into BLSF. Um, but those are the only resource areas for the project. We don't go into BVW at all. We don't go into bank. So there's work within Riverfront and BLSF and then buffer zone. So those other resource areas. Um, I'll go to the next sheet. Here's the next sheet. So moving along East Leverett Road. Again, we have some BVW here and we have the end of Riverfront right there. Um, this is a hydrant. This is an example of one of the hydrants and the erosion control um, is outside, is between the resource areas and any work areas. So here it goes outside of the hydrant. And you'll see in spots where it kind of bumps around um, service lines too. And here's a service line. You can see the erosion control kind of bumping around it. Here's the BLSF line. And then we come back into Riverfront again. But all the work is considered temporary. Um, temporary impact because we'll be backfilling the same day. Um, the only permanent work that I accounted for in the NOI was for the hydrants. They're really the only 
permanent construction that's going to happen, and it's a real small amount. Um, this is an example of one that is actually not in Riverfront or BLSF. So I only I counted up ones that are in Riverfront and in BLSF. Um, go to the next sheet. This sheet um, shows the one of the one of the small areas where our work actually does get into BLSF. So here the, the trench right here is actually that trench work will be just along the 100, 100 year elevation line, which is this squiggly line coming through here. Here is some more BBW. Here's Cushman Brook. So here's Riverfront. Yeah, I think this is the one hydrant that's in BLSF. That's the only permanent square footage of impact that we have actually in BLSF is that one hydrant. And then, let's see. So there's one location where the Cushman Brook actually crosses East Leverett Road. Um, that's right here. And you can see um, Riverfront kind of going way up this way along Cushman Brook. Here's the BLSF line. There's a few different areas of um, ordering of BBW mark there too. Staff, um, where's, the, where's the town line? The town line is one more sheet. Oh, it is. Okay. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, we're not there yet. I mean, obviously, because we're only going to deal with Amherst here, but I was just curious. I thought we were already there. No, nope, we're getting there, but I think it's on the next sheet. Um, so here's where the Cushman Brook crosses. It goes under a um, bridge on East Leverett Road. And what's going to happen here is we're going to do um, directional drilling, which has been proposed basically so that we don't impact any resource areas. Um, and it'll be, this whole project will be contracted out. DPW is not uh, doing this project. So there'll be a general contractor who's doing the trenching, um, putting down the main water, water line, but then there'll also be a subcontract just drilling company who has you know, done some of this directional drilling before. And I know you guys have seen a few projects that have directional drilling. I think it's pretty common now, especially for like gas companies and other utility companies. Anyway, um, what we've what we've got so far, learned so far from our con from our consultant, and then she's been talking to a drilling company, is that the bore pits will be about 150 feet from bank. So here's here's one of the bore pits, and here's the other bore pit, um, and they'll just really, the pits will really just be almost the end of the trench. So the trench is six feet wide and it's, and the bore pit might get a little bit, they might need a little bit more width if they have to kind of angle it, but it's basically going to be another six, seven foot wide hole going down, you know, seven to eight feet deep, similar to the waterline trench. Um, and there'll be erosion control on either side. Uh, and then they just bore Underneath um, the depth, I think it's going to kind of be a depend on an in the field kind of thing, but I know it's not supposed to go more than uh, 15 to 20 feet. I don't even 20 feet, I think is too deep, somewhere between 15, 18 feet. Um, and it won't impact bank or land underwater um, at all. What's, then, what's the depth of the brook there relative to the depth of the line? Um, we have a cross-sectional sheet at the end here that kind of shows, it, I, we can look at it when we get to that sheet, um, it's in the... That's uh, fine, that's fine. That what it shows is that the abutments for this bridge go down 13 feet, 
So I'm assuming that this, the stream bank is at about 13 feet below surface grade. Um, so again, I think the boring, the underground, the directional drilling will be somewhere between 15 and 20 feet. So the boring is gonna go below the regular pipe, the line, the line level, it's gonna go down under farther. Yeah, yeah. The, the, Water main is um, five feet deep. It's going to be about. It's going to be placed at five feet below grade. Um, but as I said, the the bank here, and I, we can look at that cross sectional, and it gives a better better picture of sort of where what the abutments look like, and and how the, the drilling has to you know go under the abutments and then under the under the stream. Um, yeah, so that so that's that's it. Um, something I to think about too, or just the, is part of it is the trenching. As they're trenching, if there's any dewatering of the trenching needed, or of those bore pits, um, you know, there's if we're only going to be going down say seven feet to put the main line in, we may not um, get a lot of water. But any anywhere where there is water, there will be. I need to dewater, um, and again, one of the sheets of the plan set here has a little has a diagram for for dewatering. Um, and again, that's kind of a contractor call on how they want to do that. But I don't think it's going to be a huge issue with this project. Um, so that's the crossing, and then we come along here, and again, there's a few areas of BVW to the south. Of East Lavert Road. Let's go to the next sheet. My computer is slow. Yeah, so actually, <laughs> so here we're back at the Cushman Brook and right here is the Amherst Levertown line. Right here, this line that comes right, crosses right there. This is, if you guys are familiar with East Levert Road, this is where there's a little pond right here with a driveway and a house up on the, up on the hill there. Um, so that's where we're at, kind of on East Levert Road and that's where the town line is. And that, bank has been delineated. Um, all right. Oh, and that all the delineation was done by Ecotech, Arthur Allen. He did it um, last spring, 2019, I think in April. All right, this is all Leverett. These are some of the specs that we can just take a quick look at like here's the diagram of the trenching. They've got three feet, but talking to the engineers at DPW, it's going to be six feet because we want to use a trench box for for safety for people that have to climb in and do some of the fittings and stuff. It's more, it's very typical to use a trench box, which is six feet wide. But you can see here it shows that they'll be backfilling with gravel and then the excavated soil and uh, repatching the pavement. And then, here's, here's a cross-sectional diagram of the directional drilling. Um, and you can see from this, it says 13 feet for the footings of, uh, of the bridge over the Cushman Brook. Um, and then this, you know, this is sort of a, a general diagram, but it's, it's showing the line going under those. That's why it's, I'm estimating 15 to 20 feet below, below the stream. And then we've got, this is about, I think this is 100, 160 feet to the, to the bore pit 
um, and that's from the middle of the bridge. So from the bank, probably about 150 feet to the bore pit. All right, what else can I tell you? Um, yes, yeah, so they proposed silt sock for erosion control. Um, the eastern portion of the project is in, uh, it's in uh, natural heritage. And we, I, we've gotten a response letter. We've gotten a review letter from both DEP and from natural heritage. Um, I don't know if you guys had a chance to see those. I have copies of them too that I can share. Yep, we we uh, got copies in our packet too, Beth. Okay. Um, I guess before we go through those review letters, do, do people have questions on the plan set? Uh, one question for me, Beth. So it sounds like most of the new pipe is gonna go under existing road. Is there any that's going to go that won't be under existing road? And my main question is, what's um, what will happen to soil that's disturbed uh, next to the road? I just want to make sure it's all returned and stabilized. Yeah, no, it's it's the whole the main is all within the right of way, and it's all under under the road. And the only okay. portion of the pavement that's going to get cut is where the trench is, so okay. the rest of the pavement stays. Um, like, well, and then there are the smaller trenches that will go for service lines and hydrants. So any of that soil that's sort of that's excavated that maybe doesn't end up being put back into the excavation will get taken off site. Okay. Um, but the goal is definitely going to be to try to clean up every night, you know, and try to mm -hmm. put back anything that's excavated during the day by the end of the day. Yep. Um, and then the areas, uh, you know, like the areas that get excavated around the service lines or the hydrants will get loamed and seeded. You know, it's, okay. a, it's a small little area, you know, around a, hyd a hydrant is maybe a two by two area mm -hmm. that would, where work would be done. Um, but any, any area there that gets disturbed would be loamed and seeded. Okay, great. Thank you, Beth. Um, so Dave, you have a comment or question? Yeah, so actually I've got five or six. I just wanted to run through, Beth, and maybe you could, I'm sure some of these are easy. Um, my first question is, um, do you know why a 12-inch line, is that standard? That seems like a large line to serve. How many houses total is this serving? Isn't this driven by Leverett? They want uh, water. I want, to, I want to hear the answer to my question, though, Beth. Uh, Larry, just... Why a 12 inch line? It seems well, large to me. I'm surprised at how big the line is. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that that's relatively standard for being put in right now, but um, mm -hmm. there's at least five houses in Leverett that I think have already shown interest. But then mm -hmm. all these, um, the stubs that they're putting in within Amherst itself, those people are all going to be offered the opportunity to connect to the line too. So I actually don't know the total number of stubs that they're putting in, um, but yeah, so that decision sort of kind of above my head, <laughs> so the size of the line, but I do know that it is more than just those um, few levered houses that people have been talking about who have the contaminated issue. Um, other people will be able to connect along there if they want to. Right. No, I asked the question because one of the concerns I've always had about this is, does it open areas in Leverett or Amherst to development that otherwise wouldn't be developable? So it's just a question I'll put out there. Um, so following that up on the service line, so so the town Amherst will take the the stubs from the main line to the property line, correct? And then it's up to the owners. Uh, the ones in Amherst are already on wells, right? Correct? Right. So it's up to them to decide when, if and when to connect. They won't be, they won't be directed to connect. It's, it's a choice, right? Right, yep. They okay. Get to decide. So I think one thing that would be important is in the outreach on, on either, either side, the Amherst side or the Leverett side, 
there may be filings that need to happen. Like Amherst is only going to take it so far to the property line. But I just want to make sure that the owners of the property know that if there are resource areas beyond where Amherst takes it, this NOI doesn't cover that. You follow me? Yeah. Because there yeah. are likely quite a few resource areas. So if they're going to trench from the road right of way to their house, they're going to need to file with the Amherst Concom or the or the Leverett Concom. So just yeah. kind of if it, maybe you you're working with Leverett, but that would be I think an important thing to communicate to all the landowners along that that way because there's a lot of BBW on either side. Yeah, and so, just to feed off of that, Dave. Yeah, I mean riverfront along most of that, and we just had an application come in for a new house going in there, and they're planning to put in a new well. And mm -hmm. so it's probably be important for them to find out there is this option before they put in a new well. Yeah, it's interesting, Brett. I'm, I'm actually thinking, according to the map that Beth showed, I think the water line goes by their house already. It does, yeah. So I'm not sure why they're putting oh. it. But, no, it looked, like, it looked like an extension to me, but I could okay. be wrong. Yeah. Um, Beth, you mentioned for the trenching, the trench will be six feet wide in the roadway. Is that right? Yeah. So they'll backfill, but will they be paving the whole thing at once? Like they'll do the 9,500 feet, linear feet, it'll all be open, and then they'll pave that whole linear strip, or will they pave as they go to kind of button it up? Um, they're calling it a patch, so I think they may be able to do it as they go. Mm -hmm. um, I just put it out there because that will be the erosion point, right? I mean, anything that's open will be er erosion uh, prone. So I know you'll have silt fence or uh, silt sock on either side, but just it's kind of something in the construction process that that'll be good to look at. Um, what about staging? Will they have to stage this? Do they have a staging area? Where will it be? Yep, we've been talking about the um, lever transfer station. Mm -hmm. That's okay. got a lot of space apparently, and um, and they're funding the project, <laughs> so they're mm -hmm. willing to work with us. Um, so we have that and, and Ruxton, but I think Ruxton has so much going on with it. Um, but Ruxton's relatively close too. But no, they, I think they're leaning towards the Leverett transfer station. And the time of the year, are you thinking about a, a dry time of the year? Yeah, definitely. Um, hoping for end of summer, early fall next year. Mm -hmm. And they, then lastly, um, I, I do want to, I think we need to be, we have, need to have a little more information if you could ask the drilling company, because I think that calculation of the, the directional drilling under the Cushman is really critical. Um, because according to that diagram, I mean, I would think you'd want to be you'd want to be five feet under that stream at least. I mean, I think that's a question for, for, for the town engineer, but I would think you would not want that water line to be within three feet of, of an eroding stream, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I think, I think the, deeper, the deeper you go, the better. And that, that diagram was kind of like, hmm, that didn't seem... Again, I couldn't quite read uh, the, the 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 scale, but yeah, yeah, I think um, we are kind of that we're definitely contracting with a company that's done this before. It's sort mm -hmm. of how people are leaning, and we don't have any of the contracting done yet. But mm -hmm. so that diagram that Tata and Howard did, I think they've had conversations with the drilling company, but they put that diagram together, and I, I feel a little bit like it's the expertise of the drilling company that's that's going to come to play and then, and then they'll they'll know what how what needs to be done but we can i i haven't had any conversations with the drilling company but um or any drilling company but we should yeah i think it's a good conversation to have um i'm almost wondering if the conditions of the order of conditions can include a depth because i just worry i mean that is a, an absolutely you know it's one of the 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 there's no pristine streams in Amherst, but the Cushman Brook is one of our finest cold water fisheries and, and is just a gem. And I just want to make sure that, you know, we're, we have a very exact plan for how deep that, 
that water line is going to go. And granted, it's not a sewer line, but you just don't want to have any problems with that water line. Nobody wants to for forever, right? So I think it just needs to be a very exact calculation and get it deeper, air on the side of getting it deeper, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's fine. I don't know if you guys saw the DEP um, was asking about a frack out, not a freak out, but a frack out plan, <laughs> which to me is, is not necessarily the water line itself, but it's when they're drilling it. Um, and so that's something that um, the concomitant condition that before construction starts, uh, a frack out plan, which then would have more details sort of on the, the depth of the drilling and everything gets written. Um, and you know what would happen is we would bid and contract with a general contractor who would then sub and get a drilling company and we would include in their contract that they have to write a frack out plan, which then before construction starts, we would share with, with the conservation commission and Can that plan I think would have a what is a frack out plan? I'm sorry, I didn't see that. <laughs> it's in the DEP's comments. Um, frack out, I guess, is something that can happen when they're doing this, this directional drilling or underground drilling that then the, there's the fluids and everything, they, maybe they hit, hit something and it explodes. The, the borehole explodes. And so it's like an accident that happens during the drilling. And um, this is such a small borehole that it's probably not going to happen. It, it, it applies more to like the projects that are going under the Connecticut River and stuff like that, larger projects. Um, but DEP brought it up in their review letter. And um, I certainly have actually seen examples of those plans online. And it's not, it's not a bad thought to ask the drilling company to put together a little plan like that um, as part of their contract. And I would think the commission would want to know, so what is the depth under, you know, under the stream bed, the lowest point in the stream bed? Are you two feet below that? Are you 10 feet below that? Um, and, and what is the plan for that? So that we all know that this was four feet below the stream bed and that's a safe uh, depth to be because of erosional factors. I, you know, again, I don't know the characteristics of that stream uh, that's not my area of expertise, but it concerns me a little bit. So thanks. Mm -hmm. We we know what the what the pipe is going to be for the water pipe, but what are they going to use for the conduit that goes down under there? Because that's going to be a curved distance. You know what? You know we the pipe they're going to bring in is straight pipe, regularly. But then they're going to go down under there, and they've got to have a, a conduit that goes through there. It can't be just their fracking thing going through. They've got to have a conduit in there in the end. What is that and what's the shape of it? And you know, how, and how do they put it in? I'm concerned about that part of it as well. Mm -hmm. what, no, does it make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I'm not sure about the, of it being a conduit. I mean, the way I heard that well, it it's was- not gonna be, It's not gonna be the soil. I think the I'm not sure if the the pipe itself is going to have anything else around it besides the 12 inch pipe. I mean, it's yeah, but the 12 be... inch pipe is a straight pipe. So how are they going to take a straight pipe and push it down on a curved path and come up the other side? Some kind they of a do it. flexible piping. Yeah, I'm not sure how, Larry, but I've seen seen them do it yeah but but that that also dictates what the sh what the shape of the as, as uh, Dave was talking about where is it going to go and how low is it going to go what that conduit is going to be is dictated dictating what's going to happen going down through there I think these these are this is why you know it has to be at least 150 feet from the bank so that they can get get a line in there that isn't doesn't have to be as sort of curbed and bent. It, it's, yeah. You know, they need to be far enough away to get a lot to get the line mm -hmm. through like that. Okay. Yeah. Beth, is it reasonable to think that um, since there are lots of questions about this this uh, directional drilling, particularly under that resource area, is it reasonable to think that somebody from Tata and Howard or I don't know. I don't know if Jason has the expertise in this area, but that an engineer could come talk to us about that. 
how that's going to be done? Um, yeah, again, I would say that the only people that really, really know are some of these drilling companies, and, and I'm happy to gather some more information from them. Mm -hmm. um, I, again, I don't really think Tate and Howard presented it that well in the plan set, because they, based on just conversations that they had with um, the drilling company, but yeah, I can definitely reach out and get some more information. Okay, that'd be great. Thanks. Okay, great. Thank you, Dave. Um, Beth, one other question crossed my mind um, during Dave's questions. How long is the overall project expected to take? Um, they're estimating about a month. A month? Okay. Yeah. And part of that's in Leverett. So, and the, and the, the road's going to, they're going to try to still keep the road open. So it'll be, you know, a one lane kind of thing. Okay. Thank so, you. Beth. So, how about other commissioners? Yeah, I just uh, briefly, because Beth, you were saying if they have to dewater, so I'm assuming they would go, then they would go to the staging place in Leverett at the transfer station. What, to dewater? Yeah. Um, I'm thinking like the pond they're doing, the UMass pond when they dewater, they have to like, that's a huge dredging project. So I'm not sure what the scale of dewatering would be on this one. No, this would be more like um, I, maybe you guys have seen the like those sedimentation bladders that construction mm -hmm. companies have. So mm -hmm. if, if they're going along and they get to a section where there's just a lot of water filling in the trench, mm -hmm. then they're going to set up some kind of a, of a sedimentation situation right there at that section that they're working on and pump the water out of the trench into, for example, one of those those sedimentation bladders that then. I don't know if you've ever seen those, but they fill up with water and then the water kind of oozes out of them, but it's clean and all the sedimentation stays in. That that's the that's the dewatering that would happen. So um, so it would happen right there at that trench site. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Right. I have a feeling it's gonna be a lot of the water. silt that remains that would get shipped off somewhere. Yeah. Maybe in the Cushman Brook. <laughs> no, no, no. All right, I had to I had to. I'll let me do this. Okay, so any other comments or thoughts on this? And then I'll open up to the public. Okay, so if there's anybody here from the public who'd like to um, add a comment or ask a question, you can use a little icon to raise your hand. Okay, um, so not seeing any. Um, so the primary thing that I'm hearing is concern in regards to um, the actual crossing, which makes a lot of sense. Um, the other stuff, Beth, I mean, it seems like it's going to largely get returned to pre-construction conditions. So there's not a whole lot going on there except for a handful of yeah, fire plugs. So not a huge um, thing happening there. Um, and so the one request that I'm hearing is for additional information on the crossing. And so if you can arrange that um, do you think you'd be able to come back to our next meeting with that additional information? And when is that next meeting, Stephanie? Sorry, uh, March 10th, and it would be at 7.35 p.m. So does that give you enough time, Beth? Yeah, that's, that's fine, yeah. Okay. Greg, can I ask one more quick question? Beth, have you been before the um, Leverick Concom yet? Oh, that's Monday. Monday, okay. Yeah. Yep, and I think we actually happen to have the Leverett Conservation Agent uh, at our meeting tonight, Dave, if you have a question directly for them. No, I was just so, okay. you know, interested in, you know, making yep. sure we're all on the same page. It's a great project and we want to, these uh, landowners, uh, property owners, homeowners have been dealing with this for years and I think it's a great collaborative project between two communities. So. We want to get it done, but we want to, on both sides of the town line, we want to just make sure we protect the resource areas. Yep. Okay. Can I Excellent. quickly ask what the issue is? is it, what do you say so that like, contaminated, people have contaminated wells? Just to right. get a quick, like, why are we extending, why are we adding this pipeline? Because, uh, so the um, Leverett landfill has uh, contamination plume, and so, there's a number of houses there on Cushman Road and T Waddle Road that have been bottled water from oh. the town of Leverett for a while. And 
the town of Leverett's just been dealing with that contamination issue for a while. And so our, the, so the town of Amherst is willing to put that line in and that water be coming from our water treatment plant, the Atkins Reservoir. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Leverett has funded the project, but I believe once it's constructed, Amherst will manage the water going forward. Yeah, that, that's a great summary. I mean, you know, as I said, these these property owners have been dealing with with the water quality wow. issue for years, and and so they'll they're funding it, and then they will become ratepayers um, in our system moving forward. But they'll have secure, clean, uh, potable water for hopefully perpetuity. Cool. Okay. So, any other comments or questions on this one? Okay, so if not looking for a motion for continuation, uh, 7.35, I remember the time, March 10th? 10th. I move we continue this hearing to March 10th at 7.45. 7.35. 35, excuse me. I second that. Okay, Fletcher? Aye. Larry? Aye. Leroy? Aye. Anna? Aye. Laura? Aye. And I for me as well. So see you soon, Beth. All right. Thank so, you very much. Thank you, Beth. Good to see you. You too. Bye, Beth. Hi. Okay. So that was our 730. So um, that was our only hearing for tonight. So we can move down into our miscellaneous business. Um, so Stephanie, apart from uh, any other ideas, I say we just go ahead and hit it in the order on the agenda. Unless you have another preference, um, I just well, I just had uh, quick enforcement updates. Um, one for the um, Pomeroy Court Poor Farm, uh, Meredith Bernstein is going to be um, filing a notice of intent as the commission requested. So we did get in a butters list, so she didn't make it for the March tenth meeting but I believe will probably be scheduled March 24th. It hasn't officially come in yet. I just wanted to give you a heads up that she is following up on uh, the directive from the commission from the last meeting. And then the other update I have is on Canton Ave. Um, Bob Stover contacted me yesterday to see if he could speak to the commission this evening. Um, I explained that that did not allow ample time for uh, notification is legally required so that we could not allow them to be on the commission for this uh, speak to the commission this evening but the um, order of conditions does expire today and the wetlands were not reflagged as directed under the enforcement order so um, they will need to refile a notice of intent in order to do the work they'd have to refile at this point um, and I guess you'll all have to decide how you want to handle the enforcement situation. If you would like me to draft something for the March 10th meeting, um, I did tell Bob that I could put him on the agenda to appear for that date. Okay. So, yep. So, uh, order of conditions, as Stephanie was saying, that's, yep, that was due today. So that is now, um, yeah, a uh, done deal. So if they do want to continue work on there, that will need to be a new NOI, new um, notice to abutters and um, starting that process anew. Um, and so there are basically from the enforcement issue, there's sort of two on my mind. One is we need that initial flagging that has not happened yet. Um, and that was due. So there is, we have to decide if we need to take additional action related to that. And then my recollection is that we were kind of waiting for that to happen and then to figure out what our next um, step was going to be in terms of enforcement. We've always talked that we're going to need some re restoration, return to conditions. Um, but as far as I can tell, Stephanie, that was not part of any of the current enforcement orders. So my thinking was we were probably going to do the flagging and then the restoration one, so we will need another enforcement order at some point, unless I'm missing something. No, well, because the, right, so the, the flagging was supposed to have been done by today, 
Mm -hmm. um, and you're correct in that they are really kind of two separate issues, but really in order to determine the extent of the potential violation, you really need the flagging to determine exactly what that what that extent is. So without it, you really can't tell for sure, especially right now. So, um, so I would say that, you know, you're, you're really needing the flagging to be done. Yep. Okay, um, but seeing that the flagging hasn't been done yet, and this was the date, what are the next steps that we could, or what are our options, I guess, Stephanie, at this point for that? Uh, I mean, technically, I mean, at this point, we could start to levy fines and do that sort of mm -hmm. stuff. Um, I'm not quite sure how we want to go. They've had ample time. Mm -hmm, um, right. You know, there has been, you know, Aaron did some legwork. There were people who were available to do this. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. So, right. So technically, um, you could begin to levy a fine. Mm -hmm. um, I think the fact that you're not extending the order of conditions and you're requiring a notice of intent now in order mm -hmm. to do the work and having to start does incur a financial mm. um, implication on them as well. So if they had, if the flagging had been done, it's likely you all would have been able to extend the order of conditions based on having some idea of what might have had to have been restored in order for that work to continue forward. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you, you did have the, there was the possibility that they could have had an extension mm -hmm. because that didn't happen. And now there's starting the whole process again there is a financial implication, as I said, to having to start from the beginning again. So whether you levy a fine um, is up to you. Not extending the order and requiring them to file a notice of intent is also kind of a consequence, if yep. you will. Yep, good point on that one, Stephanie. Um, I mean, my fear is, I mean, I kind of separate the two a little bit. And so my fear is that the, you know, we're kind of where we're at now. We still need that flagging done. Um, mm -hmm. And so we need to make sure that that does get done at some point. So, yep, Larry. My concern is that they might do what they've done before and just decide to postpone this for a few years and not do the flagging. So we, so they sort of hope to have us forget about them. Yeah, my, I mean, my perspective is I, I understand there's a financial implication to, you know, what Stephanie laid out, but I think we should start to institute a fine. I know it, it might be uncomfortable for the commission, but um, it seems like um, sort of uh, based on what I was reading and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, you know, just flagrantly ignoring what had already been communicated to them about what needed to be done next. So. That's my perspective, at least. Yep, and I do yep. see that um, Pete Wilson is here and that he has his hand raised. And so we'll get to you in just a sec, Pete. So, so I guess I'm I'm, um, um, I'm confused on so everything's out of they have to if they want to do any work they have to refile a notice of intent. Is that correct? correct. Step one. Correct. So they have to yep. re-delineate everything. And get a whole new delineation done. Everything would have to be reflagged. Everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. Re everything right. has to be reflagged. Right. I guess then the question would be yeah, like, what well, looks a different? And then can we use the lap? Can we use the last delineation that was in the last NOI as the reference point? That's I guess where I'm. I'm getting. I'm going right. to get confused because yeah, what absolutely. if it's different? I don't know, but that's a what if um, situation. Well, what? Couldn't, couldn't the couldn't the new flagging be different because they might have done something in the meantime to make it look like it was not a wetland? Well, that's why we're requiring it to be reflagged using GPS to the original flag locations. Right. Okay, that it goes back to the original things. Okay. Correct. Yeah, it needs to be, and it's very explicit that it's um, what Zengineer has yeah. flagged. So it's very explicit in the order of condition or the um, enforcement order. Well, and you know, you can, in the enforcement order, you can require a notice of intent be submitted and you can, you can reference 
surveying the previous flag boundary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because even if they didn't, even if they chose for some reason not to proceed with their project, um, they still need to restore it to previous conditions. Um, right. And so we need to get right. there, even if they wanted to do nothing else, that is the law. So uh, we need to, we need to get there, however we get there. Um, I also hear what you're saying, Laura, about the potential to start levying fines. I'm also okay, potentially um, keeping that one in our quiver for, you know, a little while. Um, you know, it's still in our quiver. If we need to pull it, we can. Um, but I don't know if now is the right time. When does like DEP get involved? So we're just trying, we're not there yet. Can I, can I interject one thing here? I'm Please. a little, I'm a, you know, and I expressed this to Stephanie earlier in the day. So this is not even on your agenda tonight. And, and there's been tremendous in, uh, in, uh, interest from the abutters. So I'm a little concerned about getting into the substance of this when this was not even on your agenda. Stephanie was giving a, a, a brief update, but as we move further into the conversation, I'm just wondering, you know, if I was one of those abutters who came to some of the initial hearings and we're having, you're having a substantive discussion of potential penalty, penalties and path forward, um, I'm just a little uh, concerned about the open meeting law and, and whether this should should be a, uh, an item on your agenda in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So I'll just put that out there. And, and I, know, I know the owner is on this call and his consultant, but um, I just am concerned about getting us getting into substantive issues when this isn't really even on your agenda. Is there a pressing need to take any action tonight? I guess is, is, is my, my question. Yeah, so that's a good point. My concern I mean, is that an action is eventually I was going to say my concern is that action is going to get taken. So we have to deal with that. Yeah, so I mean, I think it is important, Dave, for us to talk if we do need to do something. The or the um, Yeah, the previous order is done tonight. So there's nothing that we have to do with that. That just happens by itself. Um, and just trying to figure out what, yeah, sort of the path forward. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm perfectly comfortable waiting until the March 10th to make any any decisions and yeah we can um bring up the our discussion i think right now we're pretty much just rehashing um mm -hmm. and just kind of getting everybody up to speed but i think that's good counsel okay so um i still see that pete has his hand up uh even and um let's make sure that we keep dave's um you know advice in mind um, so again i'll go to pete in just a sec but first i just want to see are there any other commissioners who have anything they want to say at this point. Okay, so um, Stephanie, can you allow Pete to speak and then, and so Pete, again, um, what we're going to be trying to do is, you know, we have the issues in front of us tonight, but as Dave was suggesting next week, or not next week, next meeting will be when we can have, you know, sort of figure out the fuller path forward. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hi, good evening, everyone. And as I said, Bob Stover's on tonight as well. Um, Bob had mentioned he was in touch with someone in the commissioner's office yesterday. My understanding was, uh, and we've done everything we could over the winter, we were not successful to find a different uh, resource for a surveyor. We've got a surveyor we've used over the years, and I just got an update tonight to bring to the board. He is within four weeks of um, being able to be out there and put those points together. So it's not as though we haven't done anything over the winter. We have taken the direction of the board. We've secured someone, given the fact of how busy with the pandemic, the holidays, winter in general. Um, we knew, and I, I let Aaron know this back in December, that it would be April more so time frame. Uh, Bob's thinking he'll get out there the end of March. So I just want the board to know that it's not something we're not uh, following through on. It's not something, uh, because I've heard so many different comments made, I appreciate them, but they're, not, but they're incorrect. Um, we're gonna have Bob out there to do the uh, 
survey work, get it done, have you out there to review. Uh, as my brother mentioned, I couldn't be at the meeting back in November with Bob, but um, you know, we'll wait till the flagging's there again, and then everyone can take a walk and make determinations based on that. Okay, thank you, Pete. Um, thank yeah, you. there's probably some feedback for you, but um, I'd say why don't we save that until the March 10th meeting, and then we can have the fuller discussions. Hopefully, you'll be able to be there. At that and point. and the only question I'd add to that is based on where um, Bob Lemate, the surveyor, is going to be. Would the meeting be better held the end of March once he's been able to get out there? Um. I mean, the enforcement order still stands. So, I mean, I think that we as a commission still need to have some discussions in regards to that. This has been a fairly long standing. If we want to have that more substantive discussion next time and we want to extend, um, I think next time's a, a good time to have that. So. And next time would be your March 10th meeting? Correct. And last thing, if you could indulge me one more minute. So my understanding was tonight we would be on the agenda, uh, but sounds like we weren't, so. Yeah, um, I saw some of those emails and I thought it was pretty explicit that it did that because of open meeting laws. Um, it was not able to be on the agenda because of, we need, I think a week, I can't remember the exact time frame, but we need so many days before the meeting posted publicly. We need 48 hours to post and I was contacted yesterday. Yeah, I thought it was a standing, our meeting was going to be tonight. So I hadn't seen any emails. Um, I received no emails from Aaron uh, about any change. So anyway, I just throw that out there. Thanks for your consideration. Okay, thank you. So anything else on this? So there's no voting, there's no movement or we really need on this tonight. And the NOI is so. over. The NOI is over. Correct. So there's nothing that can happen on that property. There's a full cease and desist that already went into, into effect. That was the enforcement order. If anything um, else has to happen on there besides the reflagging, um, they'll need to come in front of us for a NOI. Right. Okay. So thank you, Pete. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, okay, so that was our enforcement order issue. So is there someplace else on the agenda you'd like to go next, Stephanie? No, I don't have any other business. Okay. Um, so, I mean, we have a couple of things on. Um, so maybe the CR, is that for you, Dave? Yeah. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, see if Steph can invite Pete Westover uh, to join us. Pete has been a consultant working with some residents in North Amherst um, on a gift of a conservation restriction. And Pete has provided us with a map and the document I think was in your packet. Um, mm -hmm. This is a, a fairly uh, unusual thing. Actually, it's, it's, it hasn't happened too many times in my career, and, and but it's it's a, a wonderful thing when a landowner offers to gift a conservation uh, restriction. Again, this would not be a fee interest, but a CR on a piece of property that they would like to see conserved. Mm -hmm. um, our understanding from uh, the legal review is that this really is uh, up to the commission uh, at your sole discretion to accept the conservation restriction. And I think I'll turn it over to Pete uh, if you want to give a little more background, Pete, on the on the family and their intentions. Yeah, and uh, Pete, thanks, also, Dave. I don't know if it's necessary, Pete, but if you could just introduce yourself as well, that'd be great. Absolutely, yep. Pete Westover, uh, my firm is Conservation Works, and uh, I'm actually working, th this project is uh, uh, a donation, a proposed donation from the owner of six, six and a half acres up at Flat Hills, and and uh, Market Hill Road. I'm sure you've all driven by it. It's the open field up there. And uh, Steph, do you think, Pete, before yeah, you get sure. started, well, I'm gonna, what I was going to do is tell you what the other projects I'm working on, which are, I'm working right now on eight different tax credit applications through the program. It's a terrific program, but it is really slow. 
And uh, it's the queue is backed up to 2023 now. So we're lucky that this one is coming up now. Um, but I can, I can tell you about the property. It's, uh, it's the open field there at the corner, southwest corner of the two rows. It's got a stream that runs right down uh, into Cushman Brook. It's in the Cushman Brook watershed. So it's kind of a key location. Uh, it's the, the, the conservation restriction allows continued agriculture. And um, ju just so you have a feeling for the, for the value of the, the, the gift, uh, the appraisal is 337,000 and the uh, tax credit um, uh, reimbursement is less than a quarter of that. So it's, it's a very generous uh, donation on the part of the owners. Uh, Ilsa Lohr's daughter, Eva, may be on the call and if, if she has anything to add to this. Uh, the property is under 61A, so uh, the, um, uh, the taxes shouldn't, uh, shouldn't increase by anything significant. And uh, at this point, what we need is the Conservation Commission's endorsement and signatures. And then uh, the owner, once the owner signs, it goes to the Secretary of Environmental Affairs for the usual approval. So as I may have mentioned, I'm, uh, I'm working on projects in, in Bernardston, Ludlow, Hatfield, Southampton under the same program. And uh, it's, I hope more people will learn about it because it is really a, a good incentive for owners to come forward with, with this kind of a, a, of a gift. What's it called yeah, again? So Pete? Either Pete or it's, maybe it's the State Conservation Land Tax Credit Program. Okay. So what it does is donate up to seventy-five thousand, or at a maximum, that half the value of the donation. Thank you, and I think Stephanie's ahead of me. Yep, if you could throw up a map, Stephanie, so we can see. There were two properties on the map that I was looking at. So just to make sure, but it's only the. I apologize. The last name that begins with an L. Yes, it's the Laura property, but it, its sister application is land of Barbara Davis and George Howard, who, who live right across the road and whose field is up the road a little bit. So all of these, both of these are next to the, the, Ruder, the old Ruder property and both are in the Cushenberg watershed. Uh, the Davis project won't come up until next year. Okay, gotcha. And you can see other protected land along Cushman Brook that uh, the town has and, and Dave and you all have secured. What does a and proposed Dave, you know town what, acquisition maybe, mean? Or maybe I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Fletcher, your question was first. I'm sorry. The next uh, the proposed town acquisition. That's that that's that piece of coal's land in the back. Yeah, actually, this map was made before we purchased that land from. Okay. Um, from I got really confused. Okay. So that is now 44 acres, 47 acres of protected land on the south side of the Cushman Brook. So this would, the, Dave, the Davis property would abut that. Pete is talking about the property to the south. Um, and that would be the first, um, the first donated CR to come into the town. And you can see from the date at the bottom, we've been, uh, this application went in in July of 2019. So it's, it's already been a wait for the, for the owners. Yeah. Brett, did you have a question for us too? Uh, I just had some questions about some of the larger landowners of the unconserved, but yeah, particularly the one that Fletcher was talking about, but that's us, so. And then I assume some of the other larger ones are Coles as well. Yes, Coles does own a lot of land up, up in that area. Um, Steph, are you able to show a few pictures of the property? Mm -hmm. Sure. I'm just going to have to stop this one. Yeah, that's turning into very substantial yeah, conservation area up there. It's very nice. Well, yeah, we've really built on um, the work that Pete and previous CONCOMs did many, many years ago. I mean, Haskins Meadow is a very old, you know, we've, we've owned that for a long time. And then we, we started kind of picking away at other properties that were owned on the 
north side of um, of uh, East Leverett Road, and then we picked up the Stotes uh, property, which is a gorgeous piece of property that actually is, honestly, that's, that one's in a life estate. So uh, the owners have life rights on that property, but we own the underlying fees. So it's really a, a kind of a creative mosaic of, of um, conservation tools that have been used to protect that Cushman Brook. Mm -hmm. As you may have guessed, these are Hickory Ridge pictures. Oh, so we're not oh. that. <laughs> sorry. That's a big brook. I, I, yeah. sent to, I sent those to Dave last week. Oh. <laughs> I've been taking sorry. my dog out there skiing, and boy, it's snowshoeing. It's really been a great place to go. OK, I'm not sure what other pictures I have then. Well, if they didn't let's make see. it, it's, it's, let's see. So I think the key thing is, you yeah. know, I think what we're looking for is for the commission to accept, you know, accept the the gift of a conservation restriction and authorize the commission to sign said restriction. And we'll figure out how to actually do that given COVID, uh, um, you know, COVID uh, limitations. I think we can do it um, safely with social distancing. We've done it before with Brett. Um, Pete, and, and do you want to just talk a little bit more about, you know, the purpose of the CR? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's I would say, primarily to keep the, the parcel in agriculture, but also to provide extra protection for the Cushman Brook watershed. And it's got very nice views, and uh, uh, it does not require public access of the owner, but, the, but it allows the owner to open um, as she as she prefers um, to outdoor recreation. And this would require this, this gives the commission and delegating to the department, presumably the responsibility to monitor to monitor the conservation restriction, we should monitor this on an annual basis. Uh, and we would monitor it in perpetuity to make sure that the terms of the conservation restriction are being adhered to. And uh, again, this is this has already gone through state review. So it's a pretty standard document, Pete, is that correct? Yeah, and I would say monitoring is gonna be fairly easy because it's totally visible from, uh, from the road, from both mm -hmm. roads. Mm -hmm. the, the stream runs along the west side of the property and, and it takes a little walk over there to, to follow the stream channel down, but uh, it, as it's right in the woods, but it, it's, not, it's not much of a walk. So I think monitoring is pretty, going to be pretty easy. Mm -hmm. And so that was my only comment on this one, Dave. I mean, overall, I mean, I think this is a beautiful gift. I'm very thankful for people considering stuff like this. Um, there is a little bit of a cost to the town that we should just talk about real quick, and that is the monitoring costs. And it's going to be minimal for this, so I don't think it's a big deal, but um, just put that out there. And Dave, do you know exactly who within the town would actually do the monitoring? Would that be Aaron? Would that be it's Brad? Probably, that be... In the future, it's probably going to be Aaron. That's one of the okay. reasons that I, I um, wanted to make Aaron's position full time is to really add some of these higher level responsibilities to her job description. Uh, because really, I mean, Brad can do some uh, boundary uh, monitoring and, and marking, but I think, um, you know, really we, we wanna have a more robust conservation restriction uh, program. We don't have a lot of CRs, but we have a handful of them that we should be monitoring more closely through, you know, through the years each year annually. So Erin mm -hmm. would, would pick this up as part of her responsibilities. I also. should add too that I've done a baseline documentation report on this property uh, for this purpose and that would go right to the town. So mm -hmm. uh, the, whoever's monitoring will have something to work from. No, that's great. That's, that's the perfect place to start. And there's no other fees or other, um, like there's no surveying or anything else that we need to do, Pete, it's ready to go. Yep, the survey is already in place, and uh, and the owner is um, making sure that the title search is done and brought up to date at the time of the closing. So that's really it. It's fantastic. So, do any commissioners have any sort of questions on this? Uh, I read through the CR, and 
you know, it looks like the fairly standard, you know, newer template that we're working off of, which is great. And it is, and I noticed on the MLTC uh, steering committee agenda, uh, John Goya, who's the reviewer for all of these CRs, is presenting a newer model of the, you know, the template for uh, state-approved conservation restrictions, and I think that'll be real helpful. John's been helpful on this one too. He's he's made some some good changes. Hmm. That'll be interesting to see the differences there, Pete. Yeah, yeah. They these just keep getting better. They were pretty. They were pretty rough to begin with, but they're getting there. So, um, so do any other commissioners have any questions or comments on this? Or Stephanie or Dave, and then? Mm -hmm. I think it's a very nice gift. And so I did notice that Eva's on as well. So Eva, if you have anything you wanna to add to this, uh, again, I'll, on behalf of the town, I'll say thank you uh, to you and your family. But uh, if you just rate, use the little raise hand thing, if you wanna say something, definitely do not need to though. And I will say it's been great working with Eva. She's, she's been very helpful getting this through. So, okay. So um, not hearing anything else, looking for a motion to, um, to accept this CR. I'll make that motion. This is sweet. Oh, wait, uh, one, sorry, one, sec, one sec, one sec before you go. Wait, wait, hold on. So, um, so. Stephanie Kilo, oh, even a yep. Okay, so Eva, you may need to, yep, you should be there. Hi all, I just wanted to um, just um, make it clear that get, gift is really from my mom who's very elderly and she couldn't be here. She doesn't do Zoom, she's 94. Um, but she's always loved that land and she always wanted to share it with everyone. And that was really her intention. And I think particularly because of the view on the road that people even who don't live in the area or maybe who can't walk or who are elderly, there's a lot of ways to appreciate that property, even if you are a disabled person or whatever. And that was her intention. I just wanted to share that with you. That's all. That is fantastic. And yeah, if you can please um, pass on our thanks and gratitude to your mother. I will do that. So, okay. So looking for a motion. Back on. So I uh, we'll move to accept the um, the gift of the Lord property. Uh, what, well, is it or Mark? What's that? Make sure we say it's not a gift of the whole property. It's a gift of a conservation restriction. Gift of conservation restriction. <laughs> Second. Okay, thank you. Larry. Aye. Laura. Aye. Anna. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Leroy. Aye. And aye from me as well. So I said it before, but I'll say it again. Thank you. Um, this is fantastic. This is and awesome. so thank you, Pete, as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Steph. Thanks, Eva. And uh, we will be back next year with the Davis Project. Excellent. Look thank forward you. to it. Hey, we need original signatures on this. So we give us four or five days to we'll arrange with the commission and we'll get those via socially distanced uh, sharing of pens, okay? Yep, that's great. And I don't mind a few extra days because John Goya still, he was hoping to get the final document here today and it'll probably be in in a few days. So I'll get it over to you. Okay, and yeah, there's a signature page. So all we need to do is pass the signature page and then we can marry that with the, the final final. Absolutely, you could go ahead and do that. And then and then it would get to uh, Ilsa Laura for her signature. Great. And so how we've been working that when I needed a pen and ink is I would, I'd get a call from somebody in Dave's office. I think it was usually Angela um, and kind of let her know that she let me know that it's ready. I would go down to town hall and meet her either outside or in the front um, little lobby, depending on the weather. <laughs> and I would sign and we'd be good. So I had to do that with Angela because we need it notarized. I don't know if that needs to happen here, but. I think we probably do. I'll have to look at the signature page, but. Okay, and if it is being notarized, if you could just remember to bring a driver's license or some other legal documentation with a photo. So I'll have Angela reach out to each of you and we'll get this signed, um, you know, in the next couple of days. So fantastic. 
Yep. And Dave, if is we the have fact, any... Is the fact that I can't drive difficult? Well, I was going to actually ask about kind of related to that. Dave, do we actually need to get everybody to sign? What if we just get quorum? If we just get four, are we good enough to go? We probably are. I don't have the form right in front of me, but I'll take a look at it in the next couple of days. And if I have to, Larry, you live two minutes from me. If I have to run down your way, I'll just run down your way and I'll pass it through the the breezeway or something. And, you know, so we'll, we'll, we'll make it work. I'm sure a quorum's good, but it's also good to get everybody. It's nice, but yeah, we're in weird conditions nowadays. <laughs> yeah. 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 We'll figure out those signatures. No problem. Okay, fantastic. Okay, thanks again. Bye, Pete. Stephanie or Dave, anything else on the agenda? It looks like we're getting close to the end. I do not have anything else. Anything from you, Dave? Um, the only thing I will tell you, just again, um, hoping for the best, but just to let you know, we did put in, and I can't remember if I mentioned this last meeting, but. I did ask staff and I work closely with them. We put in a grant to our CDBG program and our, our CDBG administrators in Boston for trail development, trail development design and construction, if you will, on the um, Hickory Ridge um, property. And we put in a fairly sizable grant. We put in $165,000. So, we're in a little bit of a holding pattern with CDBG funding right now, but um, you know, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic that that might come through, and that might be a, a really a big boost for us. That could pay for you know uh, some design, but we think we can do most of the design in house. But it could pay for kiosks, benches, um, new TRG crushed stone gravel uh, pathways, etc. So. Uh, stay tuned on that, but that could be a real shot in the arm for the trail system up there. That's great. And um, feeding off of what I think Larry was asking earlier, is there any sort of new timeline for when the transaction might occur? Mm, I wish there was. Um, I have a meeting on Hickory, I think at one o'clock on Friday with the lawyers. Um, yeah, it's um, the most complicated piece is really the solar piece, as I've said for months. And, um, you know, I, I know Laura has more experience in, in that field than I do, but um, it is a, I don't know, it, is, it seems like a quagmire between, uh, in this case, Eversource, the SMART program in Boston yeah. and the solar providers. And, um, so, yeah, so Dave, I'm yeah. happy to work with you on this. Um, more than happy, I have a, a lot of experience dealing with- Yeah, the, we, the, we should talk. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah that call on Friday and then maybe you and I can set up a Zoom or even a telephone call yep. on Monday or Tuesday. Sure. And just I could download what I know and what I'm hearing and yep. see if there's any any way to navigate through this. Sure. It's yeah. um, and if you want me to join any calls um that you're having with any party, I'm happy to just listen and then give you my feedback. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, so does any commissioner have anything else they would like to cover tonight? One quick thing, uh, Dave, maybe you might know, um, there's excavator tracks on the old Salza property, Salza property on Sunderland Road, so across from Podic, you know, 116 Sunderland Road meet. Mm -hmm. that, that it's the industrial zoned area. And I saw like excavator tracks going in there. And I'm wondering if there's like, cause they came oh, to sorry. us with an NOI. I'm sorry, is this, is this the Zala property? East of 116 or yes, west? Yes, that one, east. East. Yeah, an industrial zoning area. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know if, what's going on, if there's anything going on. No, I that, don't. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Well, so I heard about um, a project, I think I think Barry, Ro uh, Barry Roberts, it might be involved. Um, I mean, that's usually a safe bet, but um, I think that there's a, it's like a innovation, um, facility, an innovation yeah. research and design facility. Is that the one you're talking about? That one may be on a different piece of property up that way on Sunderland Road, but I think that's hmm. being considered further south. But okay. I, I'll check that out, Fletcher. Maybe this weekend I'll, I'll go up there. Um, I happen to be snowshoeing at Podick and Catherine Cole on last Sunday, and maybe it's since then, because I didn't notice any tracks in there on Sunday, but I, I wasn't really looking, to be honest. Yeah, 
I yeah. drive by it all the time. I just saw an excavator track. Like, you know, I saw yeah, I truck like, tracks in there one time, but then I saw an excavator and I was like, yeah, let what? Me, let me take a look in there. I will say I had a great uh, snowshoe out of Catherine Cole and um, Bodick. And I was able to easily navigate the North Trail. Uh, and I don't know if our beavers, I don't know if they went south for the, for the winter or what happened to them. I know that Eversource is supposed to trap them out there as part of their mitigation. But um, the water level seemed very, very, you know, much lower than it has been. And I, you were, you were, I was actually able to see the culvert, um, yes. uh, which moves water from north to south under the trail. So that was really good news. I have not seen that culvert in probably a year and a half. So right. it was nice to see the water level down there and passable. So. Okay. So anything else for tonight? If not, looking for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Yes, I will second that. Larry. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Anna. Aye. Laura. Aye. And I for me as well. So we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, especially Stephanie. Yeah, appreciate it, Stephanie. Stephanie. You're welcome. Yep. Bye, everyone. Good night, all. See you guys. Bye.